We're about to look at the completed maze, uh, the maze solver. On the right side, I built several maze files. They kind of increase in complexity as I was going. I think one and two might be the same, but here's three and then four is even more complicated. So we're gonna run it on this and watch how the recursive backtracking actually works. You see the question mark is what's actually probing. It's representing where we're checking and you see the question mark moving all over the place. And the set explored creates the dots. The marked is the X. And what the X's do is they uh, basically seal off dead ends. So it happened right here where I'm highlighting it also happened over here, and you might be wondering, well, what about this little space right here? That, that's actually a bad maze, and I'll explain that in a second. So basically all the X's will mark the dead ends if you follow the algorithm, and then the dots will represent the path you took to escape. So I'm gonna run it again. So we started down at the bottom there. Oh, started down at the bottom. Uh, I think my code checks up first, you check four directions, up, down, left, and right. For my code, if I happen to start right here, I'll exit the maze quickly because I'll go up and then up again. And then I think I'll try to go up another time, get stopped, and then I don't know if I try right or left next, but eventually I try left and then up and we've escaped. So it's possible to escape with no dead ends. So now here we go. So we're definitely gonna go to the dead end and then seal it off. Yep, and get out of the maze. This is not the most exciting maze. This is a pretty simple maze right here, but this just demonstrates what the code should look like. If you have animated turned on, you won't need any, you won't need many extra print statements because every time you access the maze, it will display itself on the screen. All right, let's talk about why this is a bad maze in the next video.